just like to pray for Faith Lee here. But Father, we thank you for Vicky. We thank you for Youthscape and the work that they do. Pray for your anointing on her now as she brings your word to us. Open our hearts and minds to hear from you this morning through Vicky. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, um, I wrote, I feel really posh with my little thing as well. Proper preacher today. Um, I wrote out, typed out my, my sermon, and um, I completely forgot the best bit at the beginning. Um, and it was, have you ever felt like, you know, you go back home somewhere and you feel really comfortable and really warm and you feel all wrapped up? Well, Christchurch does that for me. Every time I come back here, it's like you guys fill my little cup up again, and then off I go to St. Hughes or to Youthscape or Thailand or Cambodia, places that you've sent me before. Um, I just really feel privileged. So as much as I, I know you guys are like, yay, Vicky's back, I'm really glad that I can stand here and, uh, and talk to you guys today. But like Tim has said, today is Youth Work Sunday, and I'm here to represent Youthscape, but also to talk about uh, the the youth in Luton. And and all kinds of churches in the UK today are particularly celebrating Youth Work Sunday. Um, It is the way that the church is trying to love our young people in their local community. And I love Christchurch to be a part of that. But um, for those that don't know what Youthscape is, we're going to show a little short video, and you might recognize the voice on it. Better not. (laughs) So over the last decade in the UK, there has been a massive decline in how much the churches are engaging with young people. And in many ways, I think churches sometimes have lost maybe their confidence in the youth work. But with today and Youth Work Sunday, it's an opportunity together to say that is not the end of the story. There is more to come. Can I have the clicker? Sorry, Iffy. There is more to come. <clears throat> totally prepared, totally prepared. We all have a part to play in this big story. We all know that God loves our young people. And my favorite verse uh, that Andrew Bowers and many others have, have spoken into me is, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and in contact, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And that just really draws on the, don't worry that you're young or anything like that. Don't let anyone look down on you. And I remember even now standing here thinking of that verse when I started becoming a Christian. So our scriptures are full of stories of individual encounters with God in extraordinary ways. Life-changing ways as young people. So we can think of Mary, David, Samuel, Joseph, Timothy... Elisha. We want those stories to multiply, not diminish. And here at Christchurch, you guys can be a part of that bigger story in whatever way you can. So Jenna, my lovely, can you read the scripture for me? I know it's a very long one, but you can do it. I'm proud of you. (laughs) Uh, So it's 1 Kings 19 verses 1 to 21. And it's on page 361 of the Church Bible. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba in Judah, he went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. 
There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put, da- and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now, now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel, king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, from Abel, Meholah, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazel, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. So So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Saphat. He was ploughing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the ploughing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he sat out to fo- set out to follow Elijah and became his attendant. That's lovely. Well done. Give a round of applause to Jenna. A whole chapter. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So we see in this scripture that Elijah is on the run from Queen Jezebel, who wants to kill him. He's been so faithful to God and done what he's been asked to do. And now he's afraid and exhausted. He even prays that he might die. In God, God sustains him supernaturally in the desert and even appears to Elijah to, as in, in the gentle whisper. He sends Elijah back to where he has come from to anoint Elisha as his successor. So Elijah's a bit weary. Elijah's saying to God, I've had enough. Take my life. I'm done. I cannot do this anymore. Sometimes I'm sure that we can all get tired and I feel like we're on our own. We have that feeling to stop, that feeling to give up. And this is significant. I just want to give up. I just want to stop. I'm, I'm done with this. But God's story is continuous. It never, ever stops. We can't just give up. We need to be a part of that continuous story. I just want to reflect that we are all a part of God's continuous story within our young people today. And not just within our young people, but especially with our young people as we're talking about today. But we're a part of that journey. In verse 14 and 15... We see God gave Elijah something to do. He needed a task to focus on so he could avoid that whole excessive self-explanation. He needed something to stop and look at himself and his own automatically different circumstance. He needed to get on with what God wanted him to do. And I think we often focus on our personal stories, which are really great. I have lots of personal stories and successes. But God is interested in succession too. Who can I share my wisdom with? Who can I share my knowledge onto? 
God cares for him in a very personal and special way. But also, God urges him to move his attention on to the next generation, to Elisha, who will take on that work. We see God ask Elijah to go and anoint Elisha in his place. We see God give him a friend and a successor. This isn't a story about just continuation of leadership, passing on that knowledge. It's an, inv- it's, an inv- it's an invitation to turn our hearts towards those who are coming up behind us. Who is it that we can pass on our knowledge? Who is it that we can pass the baton on to in leadership? Who is the next one coming on? We're passing the baton on to our young people. So I remember worshipping here, and people would say, you guys, which were the youth group back then, you guys are the next generation. You're the ones to take the next leadership. And now you see Josh and Jenna leading worship, and Emily doing the kids' work, and me, little me, standing in front of you, preaching out of the Bible. Are you crazy? But I did that because someone shared wisdom onto me. I remember uh, Anne, me having breaks at college, and going on pastoral visits with Anne, and then meeting with Wendy, and meeting with Lee, and meeting with Michelle when she was here. They all passed on their knowledge. They passed on. They came up alongside me, supported me, and passing that baton on. Now, time for some embarrassing photos of young people that are in this church today, which are me and Josh and Emily, but Emily's not here, so you get to see pictures of Emily being a little bit embarrassing. So... Top left, we have Josh. This is our first youth weekend away. This is fabulous. Then we've got Emily. If you'd like to see these pictures in bigger, I'll happily send them to you. That's not a problem. (laughs) That's actually fun. Uh, Top right is me hugging Sam Dust. He was not my boyfriend. He was someone else's boyfriend. Um, We've got uh, Abby Dust. We've got Matt Allen, like Matt Allen, who works with me at Youthscape, and then Emily as well. We've got the Christmas party, and then me doing what I do best, lying on the floor. Um, But yeah, these are people that have had leadership, had succession passed on to them, and they are now doing some incredible things. Um, If that's in their work, if that's in ministry at churches, or or anything, we all had parts of um, you guys uh, pour onto us. We, We had those times. We may not have lots of young people in this church today, and that's okay. But you've got that small, amazing, engaged youth group that I used to be a part of as well, that are fighting, holding on that fight and fighting the fight. We've got schools around. We've got stops at the top of a hill. We've got Icknilge around the corner. We've got the community centre next door. And we have, as Christians, an amazing privilege to pray for these young people. Pray for you, wise and knowledgeable people, gifts and full of wisdom to be shared onto young people that you may interact with. That could be just saying hello. That could be if they're in a sign of distress, just checking that they're okay. It could be in little crazy ways. I came to this church uh, through a friend of mine who came to the youth group, and I used to sit outside in the foyer on the bin because I was too nervous to come into this area. But someone shared wisdom, Lee and other youth workers at that time, shared wisdom onto me to pass on that generation. They prayed with me, they stood with me, they cried with me through those times. And that is why probably I'm here today, is with them walking along with me and alongside me. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to pray for our young people, pray for that next generation in the community, And commit to speaking well of the next generation as well. And I'm probably guilty before I started Youthscape. And some of you might be guilty as well of saying not negative, saying sorry, some negative things about our young people today. Seeing news things going on about crime, about stabbings, shootings, and thinking, oh, you know, these young people of today, the youth of today. 
I really would like us to commit today to say, actually, we're not going to do that. We're not going to be negative about our young people. We're going to stand firm in the truth that they are God's children. Maybe we can reflect on what God might be saying to you all to do. But also recommit, like I said, to being part of God's great big story. To love the young people that we meet along the way. And even if we don't meet any, for the next generation of young people that we may know. So, little activity. I'd like you to stand up if you know a young person. That is under the age of 18. So anybody that you know under the age of 18. If you don't know anyone, that's okay. Wow, there's a lot of you. See? See how many people know under the age of 18? How many of you guys can probably sow into their life? That doesn't have to be biblical. It can just be standing with them when they're having a little bit of tough time at school, having a tough time with friends. You're you have wisdom and knowledge as older people. I'm not calling you old, older than me. I'm getting old. I'm 30 next year. Can you believe that, guys? Crazy. So I want you to keep standing. And I want you, as I pray, I'm just going to pray this small little prayer for you guys before we lead into a time of prayer. And I want you just to remember that person in your front of your mind. Yeah, so Father God, thank you for our young people today. And we pray for each and one of those young people that we have in mind today. I pray that you open doors, open ways that we can connect with them. If that's saying hello, if that's a smile, if that's walking alongside with them, or even that, that's inviting them to the youth group or church. I pray that you will anoint each and every one of these people that are standing up right now for the gift of wisdom and knowledge and discernment and boldness to speak truth into these young people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Cool. So I'm going to lead us into a time of prayer. <clears throat> and if you follow that, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, you say, hear our prayer, and then we'll follow on with the, the merciful Father prayer. So Father God, we, we come to you in time of prayer. I pray that you silence our thoughts and our minds as we come to you with our arms open. Father God, we thank you for our young people in need, Tim. We thank you that you will speak to them and show them your unconditional love. And we pray church doors will be flung open for our young people to know that they are welcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we know that the teenagers in the community around this church, maybe with some of them we don't know, we pray that each and every one of them will come to know you and your love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the ongoing battle it is for to be a young person today. With the influences, social media, and with the ongoing pressure of lifestyles, for the culture that is being set we pray that your work within these young people will happen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for anyone who has just started at a local secondary school this year and also for those who are returning to a school situation that they might find really difficult. We ask you to protect them, they're vulnerable and comfort them in their pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for those who give up their time to love and serve the young people in this church and in the community. Give them energy, vision, and all that they need for the coming months. Stir our hearts as we pray to know that part of you are calling us to play in this important work today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing in Christian organizations across the country who we want to support who help churches reach out to the young people in their community. We ask you that you continue to bless them with everything they need to serve the young people and churches and youth leaders across the country. And we as a church play part of that story. Merciful Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
So I do pray today that you do take away how you can share wisdom, how you can share knowledge, where you can pass that baton on to the youth, to the young people, the youth that you have to see today. And I feel privileged to work in Youthscape, to be able to put in what people have put into me when growing up. I didn't come from a church background. I didn't come from, you know, a church home or anything like that. I was brought to this church, loved in this church, cared in this church, nurtured in this church, and now I'm turning 30 next year, and it freaks me out. <laughs> but each, probably each and every one of you I've had a conversation with, and each and every one of you have probably shed a seed with me to help me along my way, if that's wisdom, if that's knowledge. So my encouragement, my come on guys, is to do this for the next generation to see more young people coming to know God and coming to know Christ. And having a safe place here as a youth group as well is, was so, so good for me growing up because I felt belonging, I felt wanted, I felt loved. So thank you guys. From me, as Vicky, standing to you guys at Christ Church, I thank you that I'm able to stand here because of you guys today. So amen. Ooh, got a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs>